mobile operating system market for smartphones is dominated by two players, uh, Android and um, iOS or Apple. Uh, combined, they basically this year will occupy 78% of the installed base of smartphones and we actually project this to increase slightly next year to over 80%. In terms of, then you've got some other players in terms of probably the established companies such as BlackBerry and Windows Phone, Microsoft. And this year we're going to see the four major emerging mobile operating systems are going to be Ubuntu, Tizen, Yola and Firefox. Hi, I'm Mark Dillon and it's an honor and a privilege today to bring you something I'm so excited about, the world's first real YOLO device running the Sailfish operating system. YOLO is a really interesting company at the moment. Essentially its DNA is from the Nokia N9. So uh, Nokia abandoned its attempts to work with uh, Intel to do the Migo project or the Migo operating system and then they moved on to Windows phones. Well, however, the team from Nokia decided to take this on and Basically, it's a really interesting, almost like a management buyout of a certain segment of the company. And they've created the Yola company and the Sailfish operating system. They released their uh, mobile operating framework and SDKs in November in Helsinki. And we've seen recently this week, they're going to be releasing their smartphone. It's quite interesting in terms of earlier they declared their biggest market would be China. However, we've seen it now, it's going to be released in eight countries and they're all predominantly in Europe. Uh, another interesting aspect I would say in terms uh, is the high price point. Now I would have thought in terms of we would see something a, a, a bit in the medium to low end of smartphones and I think this high price point is going to be an issue. Uh, furthermore you can also look at it in terms of Yol has a lot to prove in terms of Tizen have Samsung and Intel backing it. You've also got Firefox, who will be uh, partnering with ZT and releasing their smartphones in Latin America later this year. And I think you'll have a lot to prove to the mobile operators, prove they're a viable operating system before we see big backing there. The beauty of the open community is, theoretically, it should attract a lot of third-party operators to participate and create their applications. And basically, by creating a rich application content or ecosystem, this is very attractive to consumers. What we're seeing at the moment is Tizen's made the best effort so far with the mobile operators. They've already got Orange and Vodafone on board for uh, Western Europe and additionally we're seeing some massive traction in uh, the Asian markets with the mobile operators. Uh, so we've seen KTT uh, and a few other big Japanese mobile operating systems willing to adopt Tizen when, when they release their uh, OS and uh, smartphones. Most of the like North America, Western Europe, these are already saturated or highly penetrated markets for smartphones. So really, the real growth is in terms of replacements. While if you're looking at where the biggest growth opportunities are for smartphones, it's actually in emerging countries. So Latin America, Southeast Asia. These type of countries are not going to be buying in bulk smartphones that are more than $300 or in excess. So. This is kind of tapering off in terms of the potential market these new OSs can be attacking.